everyone needs to take this pandemic very seriously. Right now on ABC 10 News at 4 o'clock, the Delta variant continues to take a toll from coast to coast. What local school districts are now doing to protect children, plus the step forward toward banning ghost guns in San Diego. And thousands of sailors with USS Carl Vinson Strike Group leave San Diego on deployment. The high tech upgrades going with them. ABC 10 News at 4 starts now. The crux of getting over this pandemic is getting vaccinated if you're eligible. A message from health experts, get vaccinated if you haven't already. This comes as more counties in California will require everyone to wear masks indoors. The Delta variant continues to circulate, especially among the unvaccinated. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kimberly Hunt. A local doctor also says getting vaccinated will help protect children as they go back to school as the Delta variant rages and young children remain ineligible for the vaccine. Many parents are concerned about sending their students back. ABC 10 News anchor Vanessa Van Hefty checked in with districts about what they're doing to protect students. This mom of two anxious to send her kids back to school when COVID rates are raging. I am concerned. I'm willing to allow my kids to go to school, but to follow whatever protocols the school district thinks is safe with masks and distancing. Her children under the age of 12 are not eligible for the vaccine. Just two weeks into the start of school, Sweetwater Union School District is reporting now 58 new confirmed COVID cases as of Monday. A district spokesperson confirming with the Delta variant on the rise, new rules are in place. Staff with proof of vaccination were exempt from masks when not around students. Now, due to the variant, all staff, regardless of vaccination status, are required to wear masks. The district saying the variant is on the radar and they will continue to monitor. Of its 36,000 students, 300 have opted for stay-at-home virtual learning. Powa Unified will start its first day August 18th, offering multiple learning options, including fully in-person learning, which 98% of families have chosen, and 2% doing virtual learning. The district says the variant surge has not changed protocol. Sharpree Steely Medical Group Dr. Jotu Sandu says vaccination with those who are eligible is key to keeping kids safe. Every person's vaccine status is going to trickle down into the safety of their children. The virus has shown low numbers of issues for young students. Dr. Sandu says the variant should be taken seriously. It, it's upwards of a thousand times more transmissible than uh, COVID alpha. Vanessa Van Hefty, ABC 10 News. And we are still waiting to hear back from San Diego Unified on any updated back to school protocols with the recent surge in these COVID cases. The Education Department is trying to help students and teachers get back to the classroom safely this fall with a return to school roadmap, laying out strategies on how to implement the CDC's updated mask recommendations for schools, and it provides guidance in three key areas, prioritizing health and safety, accelerating academic achievement, and supporting social, emotional, and mental health for students. Now, even before the pandemic, mental health experts say that social media was influencing feelings of isolation, anxiety, and suicidal thoughts in kids. We can only expect that after what a year and a half over a year of sitting behind screens being at home more um, that there's going to be some more of these unhealthy mental health situations tessa stuckey is a licensed professional counselor that works with teens and she says as they get back to school this fall it's an important time for parents and teachers to pay attention to warning signs and that could be things like feeling so overwhelmed or anxious assignments don't get done also depressive thoughts or the inability to find joy and turning to their phone as a way to cope in uncomfortable situations. So what has happened is they are seeking this immediate gratification and this instant fix through their phone for distraction. Now to combat this, she says that's where conversations with parents and teachers come in. The biggest thing is for kids to see the connections they can make outside of social media and learning how to handle problems like bullying without turning to their phone. What I always ask my clients and anyone really is what what do you like to do for fun and what do you like to do that's relaxing and list at least three things for each of those questions and they don't include a screen. 
And that's a really great place to start. Now, she says for younger kids who may not have a phone yet, but are pushing to get one, parents should consider something like Pinwheel, which is a smartphone that only allows a variety of apps approved by therapists, teachers, and parents. Now, for schools that may not be returning to in-person learning, Bark is a free resource. It can help teachers keep track of any cyberbullying that's happening and social media use during class on school-issued computers. And just in, Kaiser Permanente will require all its employees and physicians to get vaccinated. Kaiser aims to have all employees fully vaccinated by September 30th. Medical or religious exemptions are allowed. Nearly half of Californians are now under a mask mandate. Today, San Francisco and several other Bay Area counties reinstated the mask mandate indoors. That's regardless of vaccination status. And this goes into effect at midnight. Sacramento Los Angeles and Yolo counties also require everyone to wear masks inside. Meantime, San Diego County only recommends that everyone wear masks indoors. Nationwide, there's a rise in vaccination rates. The CDC reports the current seven day average in doses administered is over 662,000 per day. That's the highest since July 7th. But right now, the Delta variant continues to take a toll with a rise in cases across the country. Five states, including California, account for nearly half of all new cases reported in the U.S. over the past week. And that's according to data from Johns Hopkins University. Florida is the epicenter of the pandemic with close to 20 percent of the new infections. It's absolutely so tragic. Not only have we had the highest number of cases, we've also had the highest amount of hospitalizations that we've had since the 23rd of July last year. In a new report, the CDC says 99.9% .9 of those vaccinated have not had a breakthrough case resulting in hospitalization or death. And you can keep track of the latest developments in the pandemic by heading to 10news.com. San Diego police released body camera footage of a fatal police shooting from just over a week ago. Officers were chasing Jesus Valletta after a man was found shot several times on University Avenue. At one point, officers were running after Valletta in a fast food drive through lane. Don't move! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Drop the gun! Get on the ground! Drop the gun! Drop the gun! Don't point it at me! Drop a gun! And the still image of the body camera video shows Valletta's gun. He dropped and then picked back up. The chase continued for a few more seconds when Valletta falls to his knees with his back to the officers. He was still holding his gun. Three officers opened fire. Police say they found other guns in Valletta's car that connected him to a shooting at Belmont Park earlier that day. Officers say they were all ghost guns. Three other men were also in the car. They too were arrested. Today, San Diego City Council moved one step closer to banning so-called ghost guns in the city. The council passed the first step of a new ordinance targeting non-serialized firearms. ABC 10 News reporter Adam Rakusin looks at what will change and why gun advocates are pushing back. Yes, that passes eight to one. With almost every San Diego City Council member saying yes, the city took a step forward in its effort to get ghost guns off the streets. This ordinance will prohibit people from exploiting those loopholes in our gun violence prevention laws. Marty Von Wilpert is the council member behind the effort. The eliminate non-serialized untraceable firearm or enough ordinance makes it illegal to have, buy, sell, receive and transport non-serialized firearms and firearm parts within San Diego. We are going to require that every lower frame or receiver is actually pre-serialized. So that when it's purchased, we know who purchased it. Before the vote, a San Diego Police Department presentation noted in 2018, the department seized an average of four ghost guns per month. In 2020, that number jumped to 17. So far this year, the department's recovered more than 250 ghost guns. In April, Justice Bolden was killed and four others were shot by a man who used what police say was a ghost gun. You know, many of us have grown tired of thoughts and prayers being the only response um, that is offered when uh, there are gun tragedies in our community. The lone no vote on the council came from council member Chris Kate. 
This law does nothing to prevent mass shootings. This law does nothing to hold criminals accountable. This law does nothing to make us safer. Kate's feelings were echoed by the head of the San Diego County Gun Owners PAC. So for those law-abiding citizens who purchased a kit legally, um, now with the passing of this ordinance, as soon as it goes into effect, um, owning that kit will now be will now make that person a criminal. But gun safety advocates say this ordinance closes a loophole in the current law. The issue of ghost guns will only continue to get worse and local actions are critical in saving lives. Adam Rakusen, ABC 10 News. The ordinance will come to the full city council for a second reading on September 14th before going into effect.